Gordon. I'm one of the founding friends of the Botanic Gardens here on the Gold Coast. And today we're joining with the Queensland Garden Expo and the Association of Australian Friends of Botanic Gardens to present, present to you just how wonderful it is to be a friend of a botanic garden. Um, I've been a friend 21 years and I can tell you I wouldn't have lasted that long if it wasn't both rewarding and exciting and fun and gets you to know so many people, like-minded people, people with differences that are all, all together. It just makes the most wonderful way to be part of your life. So enjoy this. We have Nikki Murphy with us today. Nikki is a friend of several years, but a long time visitor to the gardens and finally thought, I think I better get part of that group because look what they do. And don't forget, you don't have to be a friend of the Botanic Gardens and be involved in your everyday work. You can join any Botanic Gardens in Australia as a friend and just be a supporter. Your fee will help support the gardens and on top of that, uh, your numbers will help people understand how important Botanic Gardens are. We're on a fairly high point in the Botanic Gardens now, looking over the Feature Lake. Um, the site that we're on has a really long history in the Gold Coast area. It started off as a sugarcane plantation in the 1860s, then small farms in the um, early next century. And the family who were the landholders of where I'm standing now donated a large portion of the land towards an environmental reserve. And that's why we were able to put a Botanic Gardens uh, almost in the heart of the Gold Coast, only four kilometres from Service Paradise. While most of the gardens have been developed since 2003, we're really blessed to have some veteran trees here that go back uh, a couple of centuries according to some local um, people who really understand old trees. This black butt um, is, has been here since the Rossa time, the Muir time before that, and since the Aboriginal time, even long before that. Okay, I'm working today with Nikki Murphy, uh, who's doing the photography for me, and uh, Nikki and I have decided this is our favourite tree today. This is the Montaigne collection. It represents the flora of the high mountains behind the Gold Coast. It was planted in 2008-2009 by our friends in the community. Uh, we're at the Butterfly Garden. Uh, one of the wonderful things about Friends is the variety of people that become involved. So the Bush Bushwalkers Association of the Gold Coast were responsible not only for the sign, but they were also responsible for planting this garden in about 2006. And this is a garden where we let the caterpillars roam because we want to see the butterflies come afterwards. The wonderful pictures on the sign have come from another member of Friends and friends sponsored the sign, so, and with the council, we put lots of these signs around the gardens. So butterflies matter. This is the wonderful Calicarpa pedunculata, known as velvet bush, and there's caterpillars that like to chew those lovely soft leaves.
This is our she-oak grove. This was planted in 2005 by friends and a couple of years later some school kids planted another section of it and really it's a bit shadowy today but it is just so glorious when the light's filtering through in a lovely way and there are so many amazing stories to tell about she-oaks that people, you know, they just don't realise what an important part of the environment they are. We're in the coastal zone part of the story of our country. Uh, this was a collaboration between um, a number of groups, including the Yugambeh people, local um, First Nation people of our area. And this tells the story of a trip they used to make in the early days from one side of the mountains to the coast, following through different vegetation types and all the different plants that they used that were part of their everyday life. This is our uh, Banksia amula, which is the local emblem for the Gold Coast and the emblem for our botanic gardens. And you can see why it was selected. Um, it comes from our local heathlands. Unfortunately, they're fairly endangered. So um, many respects, it's wonderful that we're able to bring them to the botanic gardens and let people know all about them. We're walking through the littoral rainforest and then we're going into a little area that represents the mountains, not real high and that's because of the site is a flood zone and we can't bring material in. And then we'll end up out in the western zone. So we bring um, lots of guided tours through here. In fact, it's one of our most popular, along with native bees, the native bee walk, because people just love understanding and learning about the sustainable use of yes. our local flora by uh, our First Nation people. And, um, and it's just got such a nice feel to it. And you know, this garden's only five years old and people are amazed that it has grown so quickly. Oh, listen to the birds. So peaceful. It is actually, it has a certain spirituality about it too. Yeah, and you can Especially feel when you it. know the story that goes with it. Yeah. Really special. And it's next door to the Bush Foods Garden, so it's all part of what we call the Ethno Botanical Collection, about plants that people use. Mm. So we'll go into the Bush Foods Garden in a minute and have a look, and that's just a little bit older. We're in the Gumtree Corridor. Um, this area uh, has about 40 different species of gum trees um, planted in 2008 and 9 by the community. We in fact had 174 volunteers for the planting of part of this, so it was a pretty exciting day. And um, they've grown amazingly in that small time. It's a beautiful walk through here, the birds come in. One of our um, members is a guide here, uh, Paul, and he's Danish and he's really thrilled to be able to be the guide for this area and he talks about the Bjarne K. Dahl Trust that very generously um, donated to friends sufficient money to make a trail of wonderful interpretive signs right through the garden, right through this part of the garden and um, uh, Bjarne K. Dahl was a forester, came from Denmark and just loved our gum tree so much that he left his estate to the future of preservation and information about gums. So he would hopefully be very proud of what we've done here. This is tumble down gum, Eucalyptus bancroftii. It's actually a gum that does grow on the far north coast of New South Wales and into the Sunshine Coast. But here on the Gold Coast, it's down to one or two specimens left across the whole region. 
One of them is growing on a local golf course and is in a bit of trouble at the moment because of some nearby development. So we're really proud and happy that we have some here that we'll be able to collect the seeds from and grow some and get them out into the community. So if it's really interesting, eucalyptus bancroft eye doesn't disappear. The we, have here. we have an association with Griffith University and they're doing some research on the medicinal qualities of the Myrtaceae family, in particular eucalypts. So that's another one of the great things that our friends and our herbarium people in particular are working on. So there's so much to be involved in when you're part of the friends. There's something for everybody from science just to plain being on the barbecue. Brashikite and Ormo, um, it comes from uh, just a small part of the Gold Coast and is actually on the IUCN list for endangered plants internationally as critically endangered in the wild. And this tree was a rescue from a development site and it was brought here in about 2009 and it has just grown and has done really well. It's finely flowered. So, you know, one of our really exciting things that we do as being friends is make the connections that bring these plants into our botanic gardens and into the understanding of our visitors and our community about just how important the Gold Coast flora really is. Um, well, the friends of the Gold Coast Regional Botanic Gardens are in their 21st year and the group has grown from a group of 10 lobbyists, if you want a better word for it, who actually sort of said to the council, why are we a major city without a botanic gardens? And ever since then, the friends has grown, their roles have grown. And so you've seen some of the things that they planted and that they care for on a weekly basis, along with the council staff, and also all the other jobs they do. They, they, we have a herbarium, a wonderful group of people who do all of the um, collecting and drying. Uh, we've got a nursery group, um, they grow mostly native plants which they sell to the public but also get used in the gardens. There's our friend centres, visitor information people, which are uh, they're a great bunch of people are here every day. Um, somebody's here, two people are here giving information and helping people understand what we're all about. We have a group called Flowers by Friends who do beautiful floral um, decorations only out of um, native plants which is really lovely and that's a fundraiser as well. Up is Botanica, that is a kids uh, hot school holiday program along with kids in conservation where children come here and the friends all have their blue cards and they have these great programs that just uh, engage children in these botanic gardens. The gardening group I've mentioned, um, we have a communications group, I think I mentioned that one before that put out all of the different um, uh, posters and contact the media when something important is happening at the gardens. I'm sure there'll be others. Volunteer guides, we have about 15, maybe 17 guides, all fully trained. They each have a particular spot in the garden that they really want to feature. And so they take people on those particular walks. We do up to four walks a week. Um, most are free, but we do have a couple where people um, might come and they might have a bit of morning tea or something to go with it. But it really enhances people's understanding of what this group is about. So the friends, while they just love it, and it's a very social way to be involved in the gardens, it's also a way to contribute to your community and that's what so many of our people um, are involved in. Mm. All sorts of backgrounds. So come and join us. And Go to our website, we have a Facebook page and as Nikki said, click on our Instagram page and you'll be able to see the gardens through all the seasons. We have um, display gardens as well and there's a lot more flowers over there for the traditional people who want to see a rose. But I've concentrated today on our uh, regional collection which is really primarily what this garden uh, was developed for. This is Alan Donaldson, Lynn and Peter Riley. Now Lynn and Peter Riley have had a really, really big part of actually incorporating the gardens and Lynn's part of communications. Peter's also part of the herbarium. Alan helps put together some of the plant collections, works in the nursery, so we're all rounders and more. Actually, that looks special for 10 years here. Yes.